you alluded to some things that I want to, I want to pin down. Radiologic studies, CT, MRI, and something that nobody's mentioned yet, the LP, that used to be one of the standard diagnostic tests. Do we still do it? Is it yes. necessary? Yes, yes. You're such a New Yorker, I love it. <laughs> you're one um, of us. <laughs> okay, I really think you need to do a workup if you're making a diagnosis of MS. That is selective blood work. That is MR imaging of the brain and the rest of the central nervous system. We would routinely image cervical and thoracic spinal cord via MRI scan. CT is worthless. CT is worthless. Okay, MRI. And then we do a lumbar puncture on everybody in whom we're working up. I practice in a Lyme endemic area, so that also comes up. Now, that may be debatable, but since there's no diagnostic biomarker, there's no single test. You want really a complete assessment, and the spinal fluid is very helpful. If there's no biomarker, what are you looking for on the LP? Positive CSF-specific oligoclonal bands. That is the key test. Key test. And then, of course, you can rule out Lyme disease and a marked pleocytosis or elevated protein, which would be red flags against the diagnosis of MS. Okay. You can check for other things. So the important thing is underlying the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis is fulfilling dissemination in space and dissemination in time. And with the 2017 criteria for multiple sclerosis, the 2017 McDonald criteria, it is now possible to establish dissemination in time so that things have occurred over time by showing a positive cerebrospinal fluid examination. And so in that important, it's important because it allows more individuals at the first event to be diagnosed with well, When you said blood test, what are you looking for on a blood test? So for example, I would check vitamin D25 hydroxy and vitamin B12. If I was working up somebody for relapsing MS, I'm gonna send a cell-based aquaporin-4 IgG and MOG IgG uh, assay on their blood to rule out NMO spectrum disorder. This is getting expensive. You're gonna pay for all this? Well, the diagnosis, once you label this individual with MS, uh, that's, that's in and of itself um, you know, a pretty significant uh, cost in terms of what follows. So absolutely, everything is so important in terms of what Dr. Coyle and Dr. List have outlined in terms of confirming the diagnosis, making sure that that is indeed what it is. It's life-changing. And so as a payer, we're gonna rely on specialists um, and I think perhaps even the need uh, for general neurologists uh, to even understand the nuances so that we can confirm the diagnosis because everything evolves from that point on. But are you going to say we're not going to pay for diagnostic, diagnostic test A, B, or C because you don't make it because of history or physical findings? Not at all. Not at all. The MRIs typically do require prior authorization. Why? If you're cost. Right. I know. But obviously, if you're trying to rule out MS, it, it, this is usually covered. I, I love the, um, do, what Dr. Coyle also said. CTs are worthless, and they obviously, it's an expense. It's, you know, it's, it's also, um, you know, obviously exposure to x-rays that you don't need, et cetera. So what you should do as much as what are the package of tests that really do confirm the diagnosis. Okay, so let's create, I know you've already created, a package that you would approve, maybe with a phone call for prior approval. I'm getting the sense MRI is in that package. Yes. What blood tests? The blood tests she wants? Blood tests that are obviously routine. A lot of this TSH, is TSH, ANA, Absolutely. anticardiolipin, antiphospholipid, things that can mimic MS that okay. are in the differential. And none of this, by the way, requires prior authorization. You mentioned rule out Lyme disease, yes. right? With an LP. We want the LP to be done. Many times, unfortunately, they're not. The LP is, is useful, you'll approve it. Absolutely. I mean, it's, for patients, it's a scary name. We're gonna do a spinal tap. In practice, it's not that often. No, no. I mean, it's straightforward. No, and epidural is way worse. When I mention that to a lot of people that have had epidurals, they're shocked. 